Well, welcome to uh, BIA 2610 Statistical Methods. Here we are just looking at Chapter 1, uh, and it's about data and statistics. Now, these videos are meant to be an introductory to the chapter. It's not as much about the how-to as more about exposure. So to get more involved in how to do stuff, there are videos uh, through MindTap, um, uh, examples and other videos that I have created as well throughout some of the uh, different chapters. So use this one as an exposure to to go find the other information and get working on that homework. So this chapter really just goes over the basics of what data really is and we'll go, uh, get into that here. So when we hear the word statistics we're obviously talking about num numerical facts um, let's be honest, it's not going to really be uh, a science, it can be an art because we do a lot of interpretation with data. We'll come up with averages, the median, uh, different percentiles, index scores, all these different things that really make uh, statistics powerful to make good decisions. Uh, so who uses it? Well, every one of the majors in the College of Business uses statistics. Um, and that's like saying, well, who doesn't use data? Of course you use data in everything that you do, whether it's accounting, econ, finance, marketing, uh, production, and then, of course, uh, from our department, information systems. Everybody is using data to make better decisions. So uh, some different definitions. I'm not going uh, putting this up here so that you uh, – for me to read these all the way through, it's more of an exposure to, and so you know what we are covering. Now, I should also preface this by saying these uh, introductory videos for each chapter also will help you figure out what you're supposed to learn in the chapter. Not everything will be covered in each chapter. So when you go to, into the homework manager and you take a look, you'll see that there's some sections missing. That's because that's information that we have decided is not as relevant. We are not looking to teach you stuff that you do not need to know, but only the vital stuff to get you to understand how to make good business decisions using data. So when we talk about data, obviously we're talking about facts, figures, and those uh, individual points that we collect. A variable is a character of interest uh, for those in, uh, elements. For example, um, I want to know the different heights of individuals. My variable then is height, and I'm going to go out and collect observations, which in that case would be uh, everybody's measurements. A sample size would be the data set, and that's represented as N. And then we can use that, obviously, that information then to make a lot of different decisions. What we do need to know is what type of data do we have? Now, again, I'm not looking to um, tell you what each of these are at this point. Delve deeper into nominal ordinal interval ratio. Look at some examples, but it's pretty easy to figure out. And the reason you need to know nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio is because depending on the type of data determines what you can do with it. So nominal is nothing more than categorical data. Now, categorical data, what does that mean? Well, it means when you label something. For example, what's your major? Your major could be economics. Another person could be finance. That's data. And, and when we look at that kind of data, what makes that very powerful is based on whatever the data is. So nominal data is just when you can categorize something, but there's no difference between them. You know, not one is higher than the other. They're all kind of the same. And that's what you have with nominal. So it could be color, uh, shirt color. Um, again, major is an example. And it becomes ordinal when you can take those categories and kind of put them in order. Great example is obviously everybody's economics, finance, marketing, that's nominal type of data, but freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior is actually ordinal data because it's categories and I can rank them one after the other. Now I can't really tell the difference between a senior and a junior, of course, other than 30 credit hours, but it's not the same every time. And so when you have categories that are higher than others, for example, we could label uh, something as dislike, uh, neutral, and like. We know there's a difference between neutral and like, but how much? And so that's ordinal type of data that then we can look at. Looking at interval data, that's when you can actually see a difference between the two. And it's where 
it's data where, you know, like the temperature outside, you know that the difference between 80 and 60 degrees is 20 degrees. So it gives you that definition. It's a numeric value. We can come up with an average. If you think about it with uh, the likes and dislikes, you can't really come up with an average like uh, amount for ordinal data, but for an interval, you definitely can. An interval, you could say, well, the average temperature for the month of August is 82 degrees. And so you can do those kind of things. The average SAT scores is one thing. One thing you have about interval data that makes it different than the next one I'm about ready to show you is that zero is actually a value. You think about that zero degrees. Does that mean the absence of temperature? No, it's actually an actual uh, value. A test score, zero, is actually how you scored on something uh, in, in that case. But when you can say that zero actually means that something doesn't exist there, then that is ratio data. Now, the good example of that would be money. We all are in school because we want to make money. And if you want to make money, well, obviously, if you have zero dollars, it's the absence of money. And so we want to make money. So we know that it's a, first of all, categorical, because $1 is different than $0. We know the difference between $1 and $0. We also know that one is higher than the other. And zero means the absence of money. So in that case, it becomes ratio. So understanding nominal, ordinal, interval ratio determines what you can really do with it. Uh, and here's an example, credit hours. If you have zero credit hours, it means you haven't actually taken a class here at MTSU. All right, so looking at data and what the different types are, let's just look at some. You have categorical type of data, which is qualitative, which just means nominal or ordinal type where you label something, you know, whether it be your major or your freshman or a sophomore or different things like that is what really becomes important there. Uh, qualitative and quantitative data. So qualitative is where you label something. Quantitative is really how you measure something. And um, an example is your IQ. Well, I could look at every one of you and say, hey, you're smart. You're not smart. You're a little bit, uh, well, we'll just say you're brilliant, right? And that's a label. Well, that's qualitative data. But what if I was to measure your intelligence and, and give you an IQ test. Well, that's now measuring how smart you are. That's quantitative data. So if I measure how much of something you are, it's quantitative, or qualitative is nothing more than a label. So if you look at the different types of data, here we are. We've got the quantitative and qualitative or categorical. You can see that you can uh, actually have numeric type of nominal and ordinal. And what that just means is uh, I put a number to uh, being an econ major. You're a one. A two would be a marketing major. A three would be a management major, and so on. And, but most of the time, categorical data is non-numeric, and that would be nominal or ordinal type of data, where quantitative data is always numeric. You can always see a difference between one value and another, and the only difference between interval and ratio is that absence of something uh, which makes it ratio. And so that's what we're looking at in terms of all the different data. So this is the type of data that we're going to have, and now we need to kind of figure out what we can do with it. So I'm not going to come up with an average if I've got nominal data. It just doesn't make sense. What's the average major? Well, no, I can tell you the most frequent major. I can tell you the least frequent major. I can also tell you the frequencies for all of them. So frequencies is what I would use for nominal or ordinal data. Where it comes for uh, quantitative, I can come up with an average. I can come up with an average IQ. I can come up with an average height. And I can come up with the average salary that you're going to make once you get our degree. So all of these are different things that you can do based on the type of data that you have. So let's look at just a couple of more uh, options here for uh, data. First, you have cross-sectional data, which is looking at data in different components, but at the same point in time, where time series would look at, at something over a, an extended period of time. So what is it in March, then what is it in uh, uh, 
uh, September and December and so on would be time series data. When we look at descriptive statistics, we're talking about uh, how we describe data, and that's really what we're trying to do. And whether we're looking at an example here, uh, such as Hudson Auto, and they have 50 customer invoices for tune-ups, here's all the different uh, uh, values. And what would you do with this data? Well, would you want to summarize it to see what the most frequent values are or approximate frequent values? Or would you rather do some other stuff, come up with like a mean or a uh, median? Well, here is what would happen if we kind of put it into what's called a histogram. And that's what you're going to learn in the next chapter how to do and looking at data in terms of frequencies which obviously works for nominal, ordinal, and we can also do it for interval and ratio. Here's what it would look like graphically. Hopefully it helps you out. And then also we can come up with our average. So uh, depending on what we want to do, we can look at it and say, well, out of those 50 values, we take the total sum, divide by 50, and we get an average of 79 uh, for uh, the parts. And so we can, again, come up with an average, even a median and, and mode and different values based on things. That's what we're going to learn in here in Chapter 3. So with that, just, um, again, some uh, different things to know a couple of different uh, uh, formulas to know at the end. Definitely know the difference between a population and a sample. Statistical inference is when we t look at a sample and base our answers for the population based on that sample. A census is when we include everybody in the population, where a sample survey would be just collecting a small amount. So if we want to know the average um, salary for a student with a computer information systems degree, maybe it's hard to get the entire population. So we'll take a sample survey of that, collect some data, and then based on that sample, we'll generalize for the entire population. That's a good use of statistics in terms of what we can do because it's never possible, well, it used to never be possible, we're getting closer in today's world to be able to get all the data for the entire population. So with that, we'll finish up by just talking about some of the different steps. So if I wanted to go ahead and find out, the, in this case, uh, the amount of average cost for parts, well, I take a sample of 50, I take a look at that, find out the average, and then I can use that average to generalize for the population and just say that the average is probably close to 79 per tune-up. And with that, again, gives us an overall idea of what we need to do for Chapter 1. Chapter 1 is really about just getting through definitions, understanding the levels of measurement, and the different types of data that we have. Then, if we understand the types of data, Chapter 2 really focuses on frequencies and summarizing data, mostly for nominal and ordinal, but also for interval and ratio. And then Chapter 3 looks at interval and ratio data and helps us come up with ways to summarize it with an average, median, mode, standard deviation, variance, all things hopefully you'll become very familiar with here in the near future. So what you have to do now is go ahead, delve deeper into these, start working on the homeworks, and get ready for future chapters.